In this video, I have a high-speed paper tape reader and punch connected to the Altair 8800 computer. This is so that we can demonstrate that paper tape didn't have to be miserable and slow like you've seen with the teletype in some of the earlier videos. In fact, this particular paper tape reader can read a paper tape about 45 times as fast as the teletype. So the process of loading 4K BASIC like we demonstrated in the past that took about 7.5 minutes could be done in 10 or 15 seconds. Today we're going to load 8K BASIC and it's actually going to load instead of 15 minutes as on a teletype in about 20 seconds or so. And um, on top of the read speed being fast, the punch is much faster as well. Nowhere near as much faster, it's about 7 times faster. But consider a lengthy program that took 5 minutes to punch on a teletype, it's going to punch in you know, well under a minute on this device. So it's pretty uh, interesting to watch this high speed paper tape reader. Now granted this paper tape reader uh, would probably have cost more than all of your Altair equipment and terminal combined back in the day, but high speed devices were available. Alright, we have this paper tape reader hooked to a serial port on the Altair, actually a serial port that runs on an 88 SIO board, that's the original old style serial board from MITS, and it's addressed at IO address 6 and 7. And if you recall from our doing the uh, cassette interface videos, that is the exact same hardware configuration as used for the cassette recorder. So as far as the Altair is concerned, this paper tape looks identical to the cassette. Anything that would work for the cassette is going to work for this paper tape. And this provides a couple real big advantages for us. Number one, we don't have to write any special bootstrap software or programs, device drivers, etc. to run the paper tape because Anything that would have worked with a cassette will work with this. That includes the bootstrap loader, it includes the multi-boot loader ROM, it even includes the C-load and C-save uh, commands that are part of BASIC. It just thinks it's going to the cassette, so we don't have to do anything and this paper tape will read because we've hooked in through that same serial port that the cassette uses. Alright, let's go ahead and turn this computer on. In order to make things even quicker today, we are using the boot loader, I mean the multi-boot loader provided by MITS. It's a ROM that saves you from having to enter bootstrap loaders on the front panel. And this has been demonstrated in some of our other videos as well, if you want to see that in more detail. All right, let's get the hard machine a hard reset. The address of the multi-boot loader is at 177000. We examine that address. This is the first instruction in that prom ready to run. But before we run this, we need to tell BASIC what type of serial port is used for the console. These four bits tell it it's a 2SIO board with one stop bit. These four bits tell the loader what type of serial port is being used. We're going to set that to 011. That tells the loader it's a cassette hooked to the computer. In reality, all it really means, again, is that it's using an 88SIO board at address 6 and 7. At this point, it's ready to go. So we just hit run. You see it flicker for a moment. And now it's ready, waiting for the tape. All right, so now let's watch the paper tape reader. I'm gonna go over and hold that paper tape on a screwdriver, sort of like a spool, just to help it uh, um, unroll smoothly. I don't have a good dispenser for this big a tape. So I'm just gonna hit start, and off to the races we'll go. Getting a big pile on the floor very quickly. Again, remember, this takes 15 minutes on the teletype. There we go, we're done. If you take a look up here on the computer, you can see we've got our memory size prompt. Terminal width, want sine, cosine, and there's Altair Basic 4.0 up and running. Alright, we have no program in here now, so how would you load a program? Well, here's another nice thing about having this high speed paper tape reader is we can use it, since we're hooked in through the same port as the cassette interface, as um, as if it were a cassette. We can run C load. I have the game of chase out there on a paper tape, so I can say C load chase. Now keep in mind that in reality the C load C save command only uses the first character of that that file name. So I'm going to go ahead and load the paper tape up. I'm 
one second. So this is basically a visual image of what comes out when you save a tape in, uh, on cassette. So now we can actually see it if we wanted to. All right, so I'm going to hit return over here on the computer. So it's now waiting to load. I'll hit start on the tape. All right, that was it. That's a pretty good-sized program, actually. And you'll see that it got loaded pretty quick, much quicker than uh, cassette tape would be, for example. All right. I've demonstrated this game before. Let's say no to instructions. And uh, it'll start off, and it's a, it's sort of a, sort of a maze, uh, but it's not real time. It'll update this screen every time. All right. Now, one problem with this game is it starts me. That's me, the asterisk. Everything else is enemies and electrified walls in the same place every single time I run this game. I don't like that fact. It does not do a randomize. Uh, this version of BASIC did not have a randomize function. So let's say I wanted to edit this function, this computer program, and add the ability to randomize the starting position of that first screen that comes up. You can do that by asking the user to input some number and make that be the seed for the random number generator. So let's take a look. All right, so initialization is taking place right here at 230, 240. So I'm going to put in 235 and say enter a random number. If I can remember what the backspace is. Oh, it's underscore in this version of BASIC. And then I'll colon as another statement. We'll input a variable B. That's will be the number. And then to start a new seed, you put random with a negative number. So we'll do random of negative B. So that makes a C. This assignment's pretty much a meaningless. All right, let's see if that works. So enter a random number, input B, and then call random with negative B. The main function there is to generate a new seed for the random number generator. No instructions, enter a random number. So put in a number. Now, this program I like better because it'll give us a random starting point each time. All right, so now the question is, how would I save this? Well, if you had a cassette player, you would just say C save, give it a name, let's call it Chase, and hit return. Well, that's what I'm going to do right here as well, except we're going to watch it on the paper tape punch instead of a paper tape reader. Now, this punch is pretty fast, too. It's uh, put some leader out. And then I'll turn on the punch, then hit return over here. This is doing about 70 characters a second, whereas the teletype is about 10. And 70 characters a second is still over twice as fast writing as the cassette was. So there it is. I mean, you can see it's a still a pretty long program. Um, but now we've got it saved. So the next time we need this, we're off and running with um, the random number in there. One reality of paper tape can't be fixed. And that is that lovely pile on the floor from 8K Basic and our uh, Chase games. <laughs> need to invest in a winder. I got one coming pretty soon, actually. Now, the computer used in the demo today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look, the feel, the features, and the performance of a real Altair, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside, so you don't have to worry about damaging a real vintage collector's quality machine. It's a great way to run all these old uh, computer programs and exercises hands-on without having to worry about um, hurting your machine. So be sure to take a look at AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.